sparks were flying in question period, Pierre Polyev laid a lickin' on poor old Sean Fraser today. Check it out. Very angry housing minister has been up all night trying to dream up some snarky comment in response to the very popular announcement Common Sense Conservatives made yesterday to axe the federal sales tax on homes under a million dollars. Something that his own advisor, Dr. Mike Moffat, has said is the most bold announcement of any federal party for middle class home ownership. He took my idea on GST for rental housing. Will he accept this common sense plan to axe the tax? Yeah. The energy he spends on me, I'm going to have to send him a check for the time I've been living rent free in his head. But, <laughs> look, I got to tell you, yes, sir, make no mistake, the Conservative leader announced he would make multi billion dollar cuts to programs that will get homes built in this country. Now, he knows that, and we can agree on that piece. What he doesn't know is his caucus colleagues have been going behind his back, writing me letters, advocating for their communities to receive funding through the Housing because they believe it will get more homes built. My question for the Conservative members of his caucus will they have the courage to stand up and tell him he's yes. wrong? Mr. Speaker, it's the only rent he hasn't doubled. <laughs> And nobody else has to tell that member that he's wrong because he told himself. This is what he said about his own housing accelerator fund. Let me quote it. The housing accelerator fund doesn't actually go towards the cost of building houses. It doesn't actually lead to the construction of specific homes. The housing accelerator fund doesn't actually directly build homes. And he's right. Since he started forking over these big checks, construction has gone down in the major municipalities that has received it. So will he cut the bureaucracy, axe the tax, and build the home? It was a time not so long ago when the Conservative leader was actually advocating the government do more to increase density near the services that people need where uh, infrastructure already exists. There was a time when he was uh, actually advocating to do something to reduce development cost charges to make it uh, cheaper to build homes in this country. There was a time he was advocating the government do something to actually speed up the process of permitting. Now that we've actually moved forward with billions of dollars of investments that are getting homes built, making changes, he's changed his view and says we should do nothing on any of these programs and blames the government for making the investments he once thought was a good idea. We're going to do what it takes to build homes. I wish he'd join us. He's done precisely the opposite. Since he gave Toronto a half billion dollars, that city, that city hall has jacked up development taxes by 40%. No wonder construction is down 20%. That's probably why Dr. Mike Moffat, the minister's housing advisor, said that it's hard to deny that the housing accelerator fund is turning out to be nothing more than a heist of tax dollars flowing from the feds to the municipality. Oh, wow. So enough, enough with the heists. Won't he cut the bureaucracy, ax the tax, and build the home. Sometimes I ask myself where they found this guy. He twists the facts to suit his narrative whenever he wants. It's almost like the Conservative Party, when looking for a new leader, hopped on Timu, typed in far right uh, 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 conservative, and then spit this guy out instead. He opposes investments in affordable housing. He borrows lessons from his cousin south of the border when he opposes birth control for women. During the January 6th of Canada, the convoy, he wasn't just telling people to stand by, he was bringing them coffee in the streets. Sure. Mr. Speaker, it might be election season in America. We don't need this far right wing populism here at all. Speaking of leadership contestants, that member must be so uptight and angry because the polling shows that though Canadians want to fire that Prime Minister, the Housing Minister ranks dead last in the polls to replace him. And why wouldn't he? This is the guy who lost track of a million people when he was Immigration That's Minister. Right. He ignored warnings from his own department that letting in 200% more people would cause a housing shortage. And his own government spent the last week trashing his entire immigration record. How can arrogance and incompetence so comfortably reside in one man? How yeah. arrogance and incompetence can live so comfortably in one man, he manages to show us every single day. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, let's actually look at the facts. While he's concerned about my polling numbers, I'm 
concerned about helping people in need. Exactly. We put billions of dollars on the table to build or repair hundreds of thousands of homes in this country so vulnerable Canadians have a roof over his head. Let's look at his record. The worst level of home building in the last 10 years. And when he had the chance to help the most vulnerable, he simply got six units built across the entire country. The only thing he's done to help vulnerable people is show up with a video camera to treat those living without a roof over their head as props, and it's unacceptable. In total of the chaos in our immigration system that happened under this government happened while he was the minister. Yeah. His own subsequent Liberal predecessor has now denounced him and blamed him and his policies for the housing shortfall we have today. And now as housing minister, since he took office, the number of young people who own a home has gone from 47% down to 26% wow. as he builds bureaucracy Pierre. to block homes. Wow. Pierre mercilessly dismantled Sean Frazier. I bet he wished he never stood up today. Sean's day is only going to get worse. Michelle Rempel Garner is calling him out next. I was dismayed that earlier in question period, in response to the leader of the opposition's question on housing, the Minister of Housing treated these questions like they were a joke. The reality... No, oh, seriously, listen to them laugh now. Today, Scotiabank said that nearly 25 less percent less Canadians can own a home now than when the Minister took office. This is on top of the fact that housing has doubled under this government. Housing should be for everyone. Will the minister commit to axing the federal GST on new homes so that young Canadians can afford them? To be clear, what the Conservative Party announced yesterday was billions of dollars worth of cuts to programs that are actually going to get homes built in this country. While she has uh, portrayed herself as having a moral high ground in her question, I would remind her that it is a Conservative leader who showed up in Niagara with a video crew so he could call a woman's home a shack. It was her leader who goes to encampments across this country not to see what he can do to help people, to put, to put them in the background of his social Media, media videos for likes. Mr. Speaker, people who are unhoused are not political props. They are human beings that deserve to be treated with respect. The accelerator fund doesn't actually directly build homes. Who said that? The Minister of Housing! This is the same man who juiced temporary visas knowing that students were sleeping under, bed, under bridges and were performing sex acts to, uh, because they couldn't afford rent. This minister has been allowed to fail upwards. Even his caucus members know that. So when will the Prime Minister stop letting this minister fail upwards while Canadians are failing to pay their rent? To link very challenging life circumstances to the uh, government's housing accelerator fund is beyond disingenuous. She wants to talk about what her colleague members know. They know that this fund is actually helping get more housing built in this country. There is a number of them who are writing me personally asking that their communities be picked for funding because they know that it's going to succeed in building more homes in their city. Cities. Mr. Speaker, my question is whether they will have the courage to actually stand up and tell their leader that he is wrong to make billions of dollars of cuts to housing like he was wrong when he did it when he was the minister. Well, I sure don't think Sean's credibility or polling will be going up today. Trudeau has got to go, but man, the choices for a new leader are really weak. Christia Freeland? Yeah, no. I don't think so. Maybe Sean Frazier? Well, you just watched him in action, and his record is truly abysmal. It's a sad state of affairs when your party is led by the most despised prime minister in history, but the replacement candidates are even weaker. An election will be the best thing for Canada, though. Let's hope we get one sooner than later. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your take on this is in the comments. Check out my channel for more political content, and subscribe to see my future videos.